So how's everybody doing today? Amen. So it's been like a great service so far. Hey, it was awesome, a communion by Charlene earlier. That was amazing. That was great. And then we had Diego on Concho. Laughed my butt off on that. That was awesome. Um, but I, you know, I'm just so thankful God has allowed me to um, to come speak today. Um, to speak what was on my heart. Um, my name is Zico, and uh, me and my wife we lead the Mighty Warriors Bible Talk here at the church. And um, it's, just, it's been so amazing so far this morning. And uh, as we go to the scriptures now, um, my, the title of my lesson will be Responding to Godly Division. Now the last few weeks we've been talking about Elijah. You know, Chris has been going through us the first, uh, through First Kings, and just really seeing who this person Elijah is. Who is this guy, right? And what we left off last week was this guy was under a bush, right? This is a prophet of God. Now, just did something super amazing for God. He was under a bush and praying to God that he wanted to die. You know, because he was scared for his life, and he was like, "Whoa, what's going on?" And if you want to go back and read that, that's in 1 Kings 19. But how did he get here, right? What did he just do for God? What, what am I talking about? In 1 Kings 18, he literally had 850 false prophets killed, you know? Um, and how did he do this? This great test, this way God used him, pretty much bringing fire from heaven, right? And so he challenged these prophets and all this stuff, and there was... 850 false prophets there and then the people the Israelites are there right and before he started the test he was like guys you have to stop wavering between the true God and this fake God you keep worship you worshiping you have to choose a side and so we see at the the result of this is they chose the true God and you see an example of godly division and so it was great. It's so great, great story. And so what do we pick up today? We're going to look at some more examples of godly division. Let's turn to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, verse 29. And you know when, godly, when God divides... There's nothing, I mean, we could, we could argue and fight against it, but usually it's best if we get our hearts around it, right? Amen. And so in verse 29, in chapter 14 of Exodus, the Bible reads, But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in Him and in Moses, His servant. So most, most of you guys are like, whoa, 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 what? what happened? What's going on, right? Right before this, Moses pretty much helped, and with the power of God, helped the Israelites escape from slavery, from the Egyptians. They were in slavery for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so God divided them, right? A righteous, godly division from the Egyptians. Let's turn to uh, Numbers chapter 14. Wow. So in Numbers chapter 14, verse uh, 26, literally right before, this is still this, the same Israelites, right? That just got free. Um, we, we fast forward and we see them at a point when they're about to go into the promised land. They have a chance to go to walk into the promised land, right? And um, we're picking up in verse 26. This is after they sent 12 spies to go spy out the land. So we pick up in verse 26 of Numbers chapter 14. The Bible reads, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long will these wicked community grumble against me? I've heard the complaints of these grumbling Israelites. So tell them as truly as I live, declares the Lord, I will do you the very thing I heard you say. In this wilderness your bodies will fall. Every one of you 20 years old or more who was counted into the sense, in the census and who has grumbled against me. Not one of you will enter the land I sold with uplifted hand to make your home. Except Caleb, son of Je Jebuna, and Joshua, son of Nun. As for your children that you said will be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. But you, your bodies will fall in this wilderness. Your children will be shepherds here for 40 years, suffering for your unfaithfulness until the last of your bodies lies in the wilderness. For 40 years, one year for each of the 40 days you explore the land, you will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will surely do these things to this whole wicked community. 
which has banded together against me. They will meet their end in this wilderness. Here they will die. So the men Moses had sent to explore the land, who returned and made the whole community grumble against him by spreading a bad report about it. These men who were re responsible for spreading the re bad report about the land were struck down and died of a plague before the, before the Lord. Of the men who went to explore the land, only Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephunneh survived. So wow! This is an epic, like, godly division. Intense. A little thirsty, sorry, guys. Um, this is epic, right? Intense. We see here that the Israelites totally rejected God's plan, right? And so God, as righteous as he's caused a godly division. He's like, you know what? Everybody 20 and older is done. It's over. You're going to stay here and die just like you said you would, right? So like, this is what's going to happen to you. You're going to stay here. But your kids, they're going to enjoy the land that I had promised you guys. So he caused a division right here. And let's go to our last example in Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. And so we're fast forward now. We're here with the first century church. And we're starting in verse 1. And um, this is a few years after the church, you know, God, Jesus went back to God and to heaven. And, um, and the church is here in Jerusalem. And we pick up here in verse 1. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried stuff in and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Whoa. This, this is crazy right here, you know. This is God's people. God's people who's being persecuted. The first church. This is after Jesus left. So the kingdom is here. It's starting right there, right? And we see the first church getting persecuted. But was this a godly division? Can we, can we really see it? Was it a godly division? Well, we'll come back and look at it. But my first point will be back to being a slave. I go. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 16. And so let's see what happened, right? What was the result? Of how, let's see how grateful, or maybe better, how the Israelites were when they left, or after leaving Egypt, being freed from hundreds of years of slavery. In Exodus chapter 16, verse 1, the whole Israelite community set out from Elim and came to the desert of Sin, which is be between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Mm. Wow. So they were just a little bitter, right? A tad, a tad irritated at Moses and Aaron. And really God, because Moses and Aaron was only doing what God yeah. told them to do. Yeah. But isn't that crazy? If you like study this out, this is about 45 days after Israelites left Egypt, right? And so like... If we fast forward to today, right? Like, how long has it been since we've sent out Miami? Does anybody know? Yeah? Anybody want to take a guess? Yeah? yeah? About 40, yeah, about 45 days is right. It's been 42 days today since we've sent the Israelite community out. How is your hearts today? I mean, since we sent Miami out. How is your hearts today? Have you responded like the Israelites? Or have you been giving your heart anyways? Mm. You know, I love uh, some brothers I want to lift up, Justice, you know. This guy is like, he's like, just, oh, he's right there. Look, he's serving right now for the, for the camera, you know. But he stepped up. Ever since my, he's like, you know what, Devon, I'm going to say I want to learn how to do this. I want to learn to serve God's kingdom. Melvin, Melvin has been giving his heart. Coming to leaders meeting. This guy has been just, you know what? Miami's left. One of my closest brothers, the guy that actually helped me get saved, is going with them. But you know, I'm going to give my heart. But is that your heart today? So it's, it's crazy, you know, like, when we look back at the scripture here, these, in verse 3, they're like, oh, we sat around pots of meat. And we ate all we can eat in Egypt. I mean, 
when I, when I first read it, I'm like, man, it sounds like a Chinese buffet. Like, they just had every day a Chinese, it's just good to go. Like, hey, this food. But why would they leave? Like, why would they leave oppression or if, if it was so good? And we see that, that there was something going on in their heart. So, they didn't remember the beatings, the forced labor, you know, that they had to do for the Egyptians. Yeah. The horrible living conditions. And who knows what else more that they endured while they were under the Egyptians. Yeah. So, it's crazy, like, are we, have you been complaining or bickering? Or have you been giving your heart like these brothers I mentioned? And there's so many other people, you know, I can mention, but specifically I mentioned them. But um, have you been giving your heart? Have you been saying, oh, I miss the glory days of Orlando. Oh, those 42 days ago. It was just, ah, oh, that's when everything changed. Or is this the church of God? Is this still the same church that God planted, what, three, four, year, four years ago? Wow. Oh, five. Sorry. Yeah, five. And like, look at us now. Yeah. Is this the same church? Yeah. It's different people, right? But God is still the foundation. Yeah. So this is still the same church of God. <laughs> and you ask yourself, like, bro, like, I have been complaining. I have been struggling. Like, bro, I just don't know who to give my heart to. Well, I got something to help you out. In Mark chapter 1 verse 14, Jesus is speaking. He says, repent and believe the good news. The kingdom of God is here. It says near in the scriptures, but we can say it is here today. Because the kingdom of God is here. The church that's, that's sticking by the Bible yep. and fellowshipping, loving each other is here. But do you believe it? Or is your heart still embittered? A great practical that I was, I was reading yesterday. Um, if you have been complaining, you want to change your heart. And you're like, man, bro, I just don't know what to do. How, write a list of everything that you're grateful for of God's kingdom, yeah. right? Write a list. And then like, you know, probably in your iPhone, you know, if you have Android, you need to repent. But anyways, that's another, that's another lesson for, for later. Yeah. I'm just trying to help you guys out. But anyways, no. But write a, but write a, but write a list in your phone, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Write a list in your phone. And anytime you feel like you want to complain, you want to get bitter. Open the list and read. Oh, I'm grateful. Oh, yeah. Amen. I remember now. I'm, I'm grateful for this. Yeah. Then get, get, pray and get open, <laughs> you know, because you want to get your heart, your heart helped. But you just don't want to leave that bitterness in your heart sitting there. So let's go to the, the continue to the second point, which is it's titled, even though you said no, I'm still going to go. Let's jump back to Numbers chapter 14. And Numbers chapter 14. And so this is the Israelites. Uh, response, right? So we've seen that is how they responded after leaving Egypt 45 days, right? After leading, leaving Egypt. And so we're going to see how they responded when God rejected the, the older ones from going to the promised land. And verse 39, when Moses reported this to all the Israelites, they mourned bitterly. Early the next morning, they set out for the highest point in the hill country, saying, Now we are ready to go up to the land the Lord promised. Surely we have sinned. But Moses said, Why are you disobeying the Lord's command? This will not succeed. Do not go up, because the Lord is not with you. You will be defeated by your enemies, for the Amalekites and the Canaanites will face you there. Because you have turned away from the Lord, He will not be with you, and you will fall by the sword. Nevertheless, in their presumption, they went up toward the highest point in the hill country, though neither Moses nor the Ark of the Lord's Covenant moved from the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived in that hill country came down and attacked them and beat them down all the way to Hormah. And you see a crazy, uh, something crazy happened here. Um, and it, in verse 44, it mentions, hey, like, though neither Moses nor the ark of the Lord left with them, right? And back before um, Jesus and in the Old Testament, God had any time they were in the war or anything, anywhere they went, they needed to go with Moses, who's the leader, right? And the ark. They needed to carry that, because that was where God was at the time. That's where he, he decided to put his, uh, his spirit to be with the people. And um, and they had neither. 
You know? And they was like, you know what? I'm going to go anyways. You know what? No, Moses, we, 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 we changed our hearts. We repented. No, Moses, we're sorry, so we're going to go and do it. Because God said we could do it. Even though he just said, no, no, he's not going to do it with us anymore. But we still believe he's with us. It is, are you, have you responded in the same way today? Are you taking godly advice from godly men and women? Based on the Bible, right? Like, you can't, you can't go without this. But, like, are you taking it? Or are you just rejecting it? Are you doing what you want to do? Uh, I know an area in my life I had to really change and repent was in contribution. Now, I don't, I don't have a problem giving regular contribution. Like, I, I got to give it. This is it's not a got to, it's a conviction of mine. I know what it's going for and I know what, what it's going to do, right? And, like, with, with the amount of people that have spoken about contribution during this time that I did struggle, which is called specialist contribution, they, they really tried to get it to me, but I, I just, my heart was so hard. So we have something called specialist contribution, and we really give um, money to help our sister churches uh, in third world countries. You know, we have families, our brothers and sisters that went out to these third world countries, and they planted these churches, but they, the amount that we can make in a day, they, they probably it take them a month to make that they had to work, yeah. right? And so the churches in America... Um, in like Canada and Australia, I believe. Um, we've come together every year. We send money to, to ca take care of our family and to take care of the community that they're in. Yeah. And um, so, you know, it's great. It's a, it's a great thing that we're doing. And I didn't even realize I had a bad heart about it. And you know, we had like two parts to our special concert, right? And um, the first part it was, the, was the biggest part. And um, I remember me and my wife were trying to sell our, our Nissan. We're like, you know what? We're gonna, well, I kind of said that. I was like, you know what? We're going to sell the car, and that's going to take care of our specials. And so we didn't sell the car, by the way, just to let you know. That didn't happen, right? But I was like, oh, amen. I mean, you know, we tried our hardest, you know. We gave our heart. So then the second part of uh, special contribution started, right? And, um, you know, this time is to help the sending the Miami team down to Miami, you know, to keep the leaders and everything, help us here in Orlando as well. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, it started off the same heart. But then I remember a couple of, a couple of weeks before it ended, uh, I started doing Uber, right? And uh, me and my wife have been really attacking our finances. We're really trying to buckle down and really just spend wisely. I've uh, been getting some financial advice from, from somebody that uh, uh, a brother advised. And um, so I started doing Uber to get extra money. And then I remember it was a Friday night I was doing Uber. And I was like, you know, I should probably do this. Take care of special contribution and then take care of the family. I was like, oh, okay, great. This was just a thought. That's it. It was a thought, and it went away. So I woke up the next morning, and my, <laughs> I'll never forget my wife. I think she made me breakfast that morning. And she said, hey, I think we need to talk. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, sitting at the table. And um, she's like, hey, so I think that you should do Uber so we can take care of specials and then take care of our, our finances. And then I'm like, I didn't talk to you about this. It was a thought, and I, I felt good about the thought. Don't get me wrong, it was a great thought, but it really revealed my heart. I did not want to do it, you know. I did not want to sacrifice what I wanted to do, my financial goals, for the kingdom of God. And so this is the area I was like, ah, oh. all right, God, I see, I see what's going on here. You just showed me something that I, that I was bonded. I didn't even know that it was something until my wife brought it up. And that was godly advice, right? And it was scriptural based because God tells us, man, to give out of the flow of our hearts. Yeah. And my heart wasn't there at that time. But thank God I repented. No worry. Changing my heart. Now we did it. We did, like, we ended it uh, the second part a couple weeks ago, I think. Yeah. But, um, but I, you know what? We made a decision. We're like, you know what? No matter. It's ended technically, right? We're still going to blow out our specials. We're still going to make it up. We're going to give it because this is what God has called us to do. Not because somebody told us, but it's just biblical. This is, this, this is the gratefulness that we have for the kingdom of God. But are you here today? Are you able to take that godly advice? Or have you rejected it because it's not somebody that you, that you usually take it from? The person that usually gave you the godly advice, oh, they went to Miami. And so now you're like, ah... I don't know, bro. I, I don't know. Even though they showed you scripture, I, bro, I just, I got to pray on it, bro. I just don't know right now. Make a decision today, today to take godly advice. Don't get me wrong. It may tug at your heart. You may have to pray about it. 
But make a decision. You know what? It's scriptural. They didn't twist the scriptures for their own gain. All right. All right, bro. Or oh, sis, I think you're telling me. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. I'm going to do it. I got to pray about it because it's, it's going to be hard for me to accomplish without God's strength. You know? But really make that decision to take godly advice. And now we go to the last part where we read earlier in chap- Acts chapter 8 for the third and final point. I want to see how these people of God responded when they, when they uh, experienced this, this division, this persecution. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 4 to 6, or verses 4 to 6, the Bible reads, those who had been scattered and those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. Get, wait a minute. What's, these people, this is the first century church. They're getting dragged out of their homes, killed. Like This guy named, disciple named Stephen just got killed, you know, by religious leaders, right? And like the church was like, you know what, even though they're being scattered, what did they do? They went and preached the word wherever they went. It was like, you know what? They're scattering us among Judea and Samaria, so that's where we're going to take the word. They did not let it affect their hearts. But why? How were they able to do this? What strength? Like, imagine being drug out of your home because of what you believed in. You know? Like, watching maybe your kids, I don't know what they went through, but they went through persecution, physical persecution, you know? But how were they able to go through it and respond by preaching the word? Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Let's see, let's see what formula they had. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. Because it's crazy to me, you know? Like we go through emotional persecution. Lucky to live in the U.S. because I know some countries we can't even preach the word publicly, right? And, um, but U.S. were able. You know, we're able to preach the word. and We may experience like a little spiritual, emotional uh, persecution, you know, like I had a brother just yesterday. He had, he got a job, right, at this place. He got a job. He's excited about it. You know, he's like, man, this is great, bro. Then he met somebody. He went in for his first day, or he went into um, shadow, and um, there was somebody that persecuted him before that works there. And he's like, whoa, God, why, why is this, fr- why is he here right now? You know. And like, he doesn't even know, if the guy is uh, close to the managers there, so he doesn't even know what's going to happen now. Because they sent him an email, he was supposed to start orientation, all these things, and it didn't happen. So he's like, whoa. But this is the type of persecution we can experience yeah. nowadays. But let's see the formula in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. The Bible reads, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Boom. Right there. Formula done. That's it. That's all it takes, right? It's not that hard. I mean, they, they didn't do much here, right? But let's break down what they did. Let's, let's, let's look at Acts 42. They devoted themselves. So even if you look, look at the Greek word for devoted, it's addicted. They were, have you ever been addicted to something? They were addicted to the apostles' teaching with the word of God. They was like, whoa, this is what we believe in. This is what we go by. And this is what we're going to live our life by. But why is it so important to be addicted to the Word of God? Why? What, why does it matter? Because it's still the truth. The, this is the only truth. This is, hasn't changed since the beginning and it's still the same now. So do you see your, these attributes in yourself today? Let's turn to John chapter 8. In John chapter 8 verse 31, Jesus says something so important here. I love this scripture. In John chapter 8, verse 31, the Bible reads, To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And where can we find Jesus' teachings? In the Bible. Jesus is the Word. John 1 says that, you know. So we see, wow, like, these people, 
they they understood that they knew that man without this we we cannot just be, we won't be able to continue believing in Jesus we won't be able to continue with this lifestyle that we've chosen to live and so today like i don't know if you realize guys but sunday you come to hear the word of god right but it's not the only day for you to hear the word of god you have to actually take it home read over it. maybe even you, you don't agree with some things i say you know i don't i don't know about this guy great that's that's the best heart to have now go home and and read Go home and study it out. Yeah. Make sure what I'm saying is true and not false. Mm -hmm. But this is how you build conviction. Mm -hmm. This is how you build what, what those disciples did in the first century. Conviction. To mm -hmm. preach the word no matter what happens. No matter the per persecution that could come to your life. Mm -hmm. And so the second thing it mentioned in Acts 2.42 is in that scripture it says fellowship. Are you addicted to the fellowship today? If you feel like the fellowship hasn't been the same since Miami left, or maybe it's just it's it's, it's just bad. You just uh even when Miami here Miami was here, it was bad. You just the fellowship is all right. I just don't know. I just certain people I just feel weird around. I I don't know, bro. I I can't really. Well, let me help you out. Let me help you out with a solution. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter ten. Come on, Come on help us. Hebrews chapter ten, verse twenty-four to twenty-five. And this is going to be this is a great, great solution, guys, for your heart. And um, the Bible reads in verse 24, And let's consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Let me jump to Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 the Bible reads Therefore if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ If you have any encouragement I think that's like epic right there If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ If any comfort from His love if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, humility value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. So we, we take those two scriptures and we're like, whoa, Give your heart. You make the fellowship great. You really bring out the love that you want to see. You make it happen. Because the Bible doesn't say, hey, come and take. Come. Come and take. Enjoy the, the love. No, no, no. It says give. And that's how the fellowship is great. That's how you see the love. That's how you make it really like what God's kingdom is supposed to be. To have great fellowship. And then the next thing they talk about is breaking the breaking of bread. And we got to do that today, right? Together as family. We remembered what Jesus did on the cross for us. You know, we, we take the bread and the juice and, and we take it and we're like, Wow, God, you died for me. You, you shed your blood for me. And this is the time I'm going to remember it. It's so important. I remember before I was even saved and I used to go to church with my parents when I was younger. And they would do this like once a month, you know. And I didn't really understand it. I mean, I, I knew that Jesus died and all this, and I knew that that was to remember Him, right? But I didn't get the gist. I didn't understand how much we really need it. Like every week, every day if, if possible, you know? Because it's it just, that's what brings your heart to a level to be able to accept God's Word. That is what helps you in your faith and believe in Christ. And the last thing they said, enter prayer. How is your prayer life going today? Or maybe you've never prayed ever. And you're like, man, I don't know what's the importance, importance of prayer. Well, I'm going to help you that, with that as well. So let's, let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Come on, help us. This is one of my like, oh my gosh. I remember I was going through something a year or two, two years ago. And um, I, was, I was a Christian at this time. And um, a brother named Winley, he helped me with the scripture. And it, it transformed my life. Like ever since then, like this has got to be like one of my favorite scriptures. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. 
Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Amen. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And this, that, that part right there just blows, blows my mind. The peace of God that transcends all understanding. So that's my understanding. And that's all of you guys understanding. Yeah. But it, it just transcends all of we don't even we can't even comprehend it. Yeah. But this is what prayer will do. This is what prayer does to your life. And see what happens. But see another thing that with the disciples in the first century in Acts chapter four. Let's see what they, what they did before this, this persecution happened. But see what 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 were, like what else were they praying? Like they said it in that scripture, right? But let's see an example of it, you know? Let's see an example. In Acts chapter four, verse twenty-four. And verse twenty-four it said, When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Amen. Keys. Look at this, man. Like practicals. Pray. Easy. It, that's it. Cut. Um, Peter and John literally just got physically persecuted by religion. This is way before the church got scattered and persecuted. They were already getting persecuted, but they just got beatings, you know? And this is what they this is how they responded. They went and prayed. They went and like, you know, God, we know. We know that this happened because they're trying to, to get rid of your word. They're trying to do whatever to your kingdom. But we know, God, that we can do it. We can spread the gospel with your power. Help us. They asked God for help. And what did God do? At, you see in verse 31. After they prayed, the place they were meeting was shaken. Mm. Like, can you imagine that? Have you had a prayer time like that? And you're like, oh, bro, I haven't even prayed ever. Well, start. Ask a, ask a Christian. Ask somebody who, who asks you out how to pray. And they will help you. But you have to start somewhere. Just, just don't be down. And disciples, go after it. This is the only way we'll be able to do God's will. Regardless, like you see in Acts chapter 8, what did they do? God's will was to continue to preach the word. Right? And so they got scattered. And they, they, what did they do when they got scattered? They preached the word. Why? Because Jesus said, hey, you're going to go to all nations. You're going to baptize, you're going to make disciples and baptize them. But all nations. And they understood it. Yeah. And so because they understood God's will, this is what they did. Mm. And so today, I, I challenge you guys, I charge you guys to do this. Because my third and final point is, if you take the last two words of my first two points, okay. hey, you put them on this last point, it says, Go! Go to all nations, we must go. And to God be the glory. Woo!